Day 52 solution and we're building our pizza shop. So let's start by setting up our 2D array. I'll call my array pizza because why not? It's sensible. And I'm going to bring in my auto load code straight away here. Now you might think that's a bit weird, but because of try and accept, we don't need to worry about it too much. So f equals open pizza.txt in read mode. And that should open the file up so we can look into it. Uh, the pizza array equals the evaluated version of f.read, which reads the entire file in. Um, that should work there. f.close to close the file up so it doesn't take up memory. And I'm going to bring an accept. I'm just going to print out error, no existing pizza list using a blank one. And that's all. So all that's going to happen, literally, if my load doesn't work because it's just going to go, oh, cool, I'll use the blank one. Uh, we can even run this now because there's no more code. There's no existing pizza list. It can use a blank one. It's only when the auto save code works later on that we're going to get into that. So let's build our, our loop. I'm going to go up and import some of my favorites, OS and time specifically, because I'm going to do time.sleep1 and OS.system clear to make sure the screen's always blank at the start of a new menu. Let's put our pizza shop's name on there. Romano's Pizza, clearly legally distinct. <laughs> Actually, um, I see a lot of Romano's Pizzas when I walk around. I think it must be the go-to joke um, since I've built it into a, uh, one of my entries of the Curriculum Hub. I've seen it a lot, uh, but there we go. Romano's Pizza, our legally distinct entity. Um, and I'm going to do some menu options. I'm going to do one is add pizza. In fact, that's all I'm doing, isn't it? Let's do add. I, this isn't strictly part of the of the um, question, but we're going to do it nonetheless. Right. So, if menu is one, again the menu's in quote. Sorry, the one is in quotes because it's text. I'm done. I'm done casting to it. I'm going to call the subroutine add pizza, which I haven't written yet. Otherwise, I'm going to call the subroutine view pizza and we'll build a pretty print function in a moment for that. But once that's done, I'm always going to save the pizza array. So I don't think I need to put a try or an accept on this because I'm not doing anything with it. The worst case scenario is the pizza.txt file is not going to be there and it's make it, it'll make a new one. That's what W does. Um, so f.write the string version of our pizza array and f.close so it can actually save. So every time you change something in the array, be it you view it or you edit it, it's going to go back and create that file. Okay, let's write the add pizza subroutine. Okay, so I'm going to do time.sleep1, I'm going to do os.system clear just to clear the screen. I'm going to put name. Let me do the user's name. I'm going to ask for toppings, even though I haven't done that because I haven't said that in the question. Because otherwise, you know, how would you get a pizza with toppings on it? Size. I will do small, medium, or large. And I'm actually going to do dot lower to that one, so I know I can look it up to do, get to do the if statement in a minute. And also, it was going to be the quantity. Now, this was the interesting one, isn't it? Because I, I want to do that. But what I also want to do is stop it from crashing. So I'm going to put that inside try. And in accept, I'm going to print an error message that says error quantity must be a whole number. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put that in a while true loop. So I want you to think about this a little bit. A while true loop, what it's going to do, it's going to ask for the quantity. They don't type in an integer. That's going to crash it and go to the accept part. But then it's going to jump us back out. If the quantity has been typed in correctly, it'll get to that second line, which will break it out of the loop. This is a nice way of basically putting some validation in. I'm going to keep checking until they have actually put in an integer as a quantity, which is, is a nice way of doing it, really. Okay. 
So with that in mind, let's have a look here. Let's put cost per pizza. Start that as zero. If size is small, the pizza cost is going to be five ninety nine. If the size is medium, and look, I only need to look for um, the lowercase version because I put lowercase on the input, so it's going to be lowercase no matter what the user does. Um, if it's medium, the cost is going to be nine ninety nine. I'm going to put an else in here because if the user puts in large, extra large or, or silly, we'll charge them the most amount that we can. Cost equals $14.99 for the biggest size pizza we have. Okay, so now I've got that cost. I need to do total is going to be the cost multiplied by the quantity. And I'm also going to do total equals round total to two decimal places because we could end up with some weird stuff going on here if we're not careful. We should be all right, but you never know. Okay, so we've got that. Let's make our row. Our row is going to be our user's name, our toppings, our size, our quantity, and our total cost as our last thing. And we're going to go up and we're going to do pizza dot append row. So it's going to add that to the row. So that should work for adding that to the row. That should grow. And in fact, I'm going to run this and test it out. I'm going to add a pizza for me. Let's go for um, ham and cheese. I'll go for a medium pizza. I'll go for two of them to add it to my list. Okay, we should be able to find that now in my files. There's pizza.txt and you can see ham and cheese has been added. If I stop it, I load it. This time it loads it up. I can add a new pizza to it. Let's go for Ian Cheesington. He's gonna have a cheese pizza. Small, but he's gonna have five of them. And you can see that got added there along with the correct calculation. The only thing I'm missing now is my nice printing function, which I called Called show pizza, what do I call it? View pizza. So I'm going to print my headings. In fact, I can do this in a nice way. And by doing it this way, I can use now F strings to bring these things in and align them nicely. So I'm going to bring in H1, and I'm going to center align it amongst 10. And in fact, that's probably what I'm going to do to all of them. I might end up going over my size there two, three, four, five. Have a look now. That just makes it a little bit bigger so I can see if that works. Well, that looks okay. In fact, I can move that over here a little bit now. Okay, now we'll use our loop for row in pizzas print. I'm going to copy my entire print statement from here. But instead of h1, it's going to be row square brackets and the index of each one. The name is going to be zero. Row is going to be one. And again, remember these are zero index. What that means, it's starting counting from zero rather than one. So if you're wondering why the numbers are all offset by one, that's the reason. So that should be okay. And then at the end, I'm going to do time.sleep just for two seconds so people can read the row. So a quick look at that. Uh, pizzas is not defined because it's called pizza, not pizzas. That's why you've got to test your code, everyone. And let's have a look. I think I'm more or less there. Yeah, we're good there. The lining up is because I'm using 10 for the first one, uh, the toppings. So maybe the toppings needs to use more like 20. Maybe a bit more room for the name as well. But it's there. It's mostly there. I think we're good. Oh.